right, Sunbread by Elsa Clevin. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> the wind, it whooshed. The snow, it whirled. The rain streamed down, it sloshed and swirled and washed the colors from the world. See how everything has gotten all sort of grab and kind of sad. Bare trees shook like chilly bones. Children grumbled in their homes. Birds and beasts all wished the sun would show its golden face again. And I can see why. That looks pretty unpleasant. A baker missed the sun so much, she took some flour from her hutch. Some butter, sugar, eggs, and yeast. She said, I'll bake a sunny feast. Because the real sun likes to hide, I'll make my own small sun inside. What a lovely idea. Let's see what she does. She kneaded bread dough, rich and gold, glossy, springy, smooth to hold. She shaped a bread so round and grand, it seemed the sun shone in her hands. I would agree with that. Perhaps the baker's loving touch helped her sun bread grow so much. Perhaps it was the yeast or flour. Something gave that sun bread power. It rose and rose and rose and rose. A smell like heaven filled the nose of every chilly child and dog, every porcupine and hog. They saw that good bread rise and shine and stopped their grumbles, groans, and whines. Have you ever been really crabby when you're stuck inside? I usually am. The baker made a sun, they cried. The baker let them all inside. Ooh, and they were admiring it. That's a lovely piece of bread. And filled them up from toe to head with puffy, hot, delicious bread. Bread so brilliant, bright, and sunny, summer seemed to fill their tummies. Ooh. Bread so fluffy, so fine, they felt themselves begin to shine. And then surprise, look what they're doing. Begin to rise, to float, to flutter, flip, and fly, light as kites into the sky. I want some bread like that. And down again to dance and sing. They all joined hands, hoofs and wings, and praised the joy good bread can bring. They made a sound so sweet and deep, the sun woke up from its sleep and burst through the lumpy clouds and streamed down on the startled crowd. The sun is here, they gave a cheer. It wants some bread, the baker said. I would think he would. So everyone threw bits of bread, chunks and hunks and crusty crumbs into the sky up to the sun, who ate it up and beamed back down on every city, field, and town. Oh, that's nice. I love sunny days. Oh, it dried the fur of mouse and dog and warmed the soul of bear and frog. Everybody seems to be having a good time playing by the water. It glittered on the blue-green seas and wove golden ribbons through the trees. That's my kind of day. Ooh, do you see the snake there? It painted colors on the day, melted all the snow away, and brought the shadows out to play. 
Its scattered rainbows, soft and bright, fed the plants with its clear light. Look at all the green plants and flowers. Streaked the sky, red, yellow, pink, and purple. Ooh, and then began to sink. And as the sun slipped down to rest, the baker shouted this request. Come back for breakfast, please, dear son. I'll bake fresh sun bread and sun buns. The baker baked the whole night long. Everybody else seems to be sleeping. And then, hooray! At the crack of dawn, the sun was back to spread its light like honey on each yummy bite. And dance around the world and sing of all the joy good bread can bring. And now, when it's cold and gray and dark and icy, guess who plays? What do you think? Who does that? Plays with flour, sugar, eggs, and yeast. Guess who bakes bread, stars, and beast? Bread birds and flowers, boats and towers, tons of buttery small suns, which shine until the real sun comes. Who do you think's doing that? The baker and her crew. That's who. Looks like she's got a lot of help there. That's a great story, don't you think? I really like the fact that the sun is nice and shiny and helping with the baker. Well, actually, do you know that you could actually use the sun to bake bread? Not sure suns actually eat bread, but they can help you make it, or a cookie or anything else. They're called solar ovens, and they are super easy to put together. You just need a box like this pizza box. What you do need is a box that has a hinged lid, and that's what makes pizza boxes so cool. And the reason you want it hinged is so that you can put your food inside and you can move this around, get it in the sun just the way you want to, and trap the sun's rays inside to use that power to cook. Let me show you how to put it together. Let me get this one out of the way and I'll get one that hasn't been folded and show you how to do it. Now, if you have a kit, you should have one of these. It's going to be a little bit smaller, but this will be, make it easy for you to see. The first thing you need to do is have a window. A window lets the sunlight in, just like your windows do, and so you're going to have to cut one. So I've taken this pizza box and I've cut part of it out, just three sides, and then I can push that in and make that bend like that, and I have a window, but I also have a reflector. That will allow me to keep the sun's rays right on target and bouncing right inside. So windows need to have a cover on them, and I need a way to trap the sunlight inside. The clear plastic makes that really, really easy. So to do that, just flip your box over, and see that little window that we, that little window frame that we left right there? That's what we're gonna use as a frame for our plastic, and you can use any kind of clear plastic that you want. It does need to be clear, you need to be able to see through it. This is really thin, you can get stuff thicker than that. What you need to do is just put it in place and tape it down. Now this one has two pieces to it. And I've decided to leave that because it has a little bit of an air space that will help make our oven even warmer. So next thing, tape it down. And I've got some masking tape and hang on while I get this done.
So now that we've got the window nice and taped down, let's go ahead and put the box together. To do that, you just look at the score lines and bend them up along the score lines. Most boxes have a little piece on the end with little notches, and that's going to lock those into place. And there you go. On this side, however, there isn't one. So what we're probably going to need to do at this point is add just a couple pieces of tape on each corner. We have a window, and now we have to have a way to reflect the sun's light into our window. And that's what this is for. We're going to use this as a little reflector. If you notice that this isn't really very shiny, so the sun's rays aren't really going to bounce too well off of it, but we can fix that by putting something shiny on it, like foil. So I have a little piece of foil left over from something, and it's about the right size. Just, we want to put it around the edges like this. And you can tape it down if you want to, but you don't have to. You do want the shiniest side facing outward. And there we have a nice, easy reflector. And we can use a skewer like this to hold it up wherever we want to. So we can make it almost closed, all the way open, depending on where the sun is. You know, as the sun travels across the sky, it changes its direction and its, and its movement. So we have to be able to match that with our reflector, just like that. All right, that part's done. The next thing we need to do is to work on the inside. So we have the sun's rays coming in, but we're back to that, oh, it, nothing really bounces off this very well. So why don't we go ahead and do the very same thing that we did out here on the inside of our box with another piece of foil just going to help get those rays bouncing around and reflecting nicely all over the inside of our oven. And all you're going to do is just sort of get it in place and get as much of the inside covered as you can. And you can cut this off nice and pretty or you can do what I'm going to do right now is just fold them over the edges. Almost all of those surfaces covered with something nice and shiny now. So, sun's rays come in, bounce, reflect all around, get trapped and can't go back out. The last thing that we need is a dark piece of paper or something else that's dark. We'll sit this in the center. And if you've ever worn black on a really hot day, you know that it gets really warm. It holds the heat in. And that's what this black paper is going to do. This is where we're going to cook things. So we're going to have all these bouncing sun's rays, and they're going to stop and warm up this piece of um, paper here and what we cook on top of it. So the very next thing to do is to go outside, and I'll show you how to use it. Time to try out your new solar oven. All you really need is a sunny day. Find a place that is relatively flat and, if possible, protected and out of the wind. Place your food on a piece of foil, or you could use a dark colored pan if you want. In this case, we're making s'mores. Once you have all the food in place, place that container on top of the black paper and close the oven up. Tilt the reflector back and forth until you find the spot that reflects the sun's rays the best and then secure it in place with a skewer. You might need to tape the skewer down. Now we wait and let the sun work its magic. Once you're happy with the amount of gooiness, it's time to enjoy your yummy treat. 